and the series is titled Loving the Unloved. Loving the Unloved. I think we demonstrate that quite well here at Words of Life Ministries. Amen. Loving the unloved. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Uh, the, the, the lesson is 1.3. Title uh, of the Christian education lesson is, is Water from the Well. The lesson's big ideal is I will show mercy and uh, share God's love with those who have made life-altering mistakes. All right. Uh, the focus verse is John 4 and 13 uh, through 14. Uh, 14, John 4, 13 through 14. And which we will read during the lesson text. Lesson text is John 4, 5 through 42. Amen. Now, I, I'm a uh, I'm gonna do it a little different tonight. You all, y'all can be seated if you would like. You can stand if you would like, but you can be seated. It's gonna take me a while to go through uh, these scriptures the way I have things set up. So normally we would stand for the reading of God's word, but Hallelujah, we're gonna be seated on tonight. All right, we're gonna begin with the lesson text. And the lesson text reads, John 4 and 5 through 42. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called uh, Sychar, which mean a liar. Sychar. Sychar means a liar or a drunkard or it means the end. Saka. So remember that. Uh, so they came to a city in Samaria called Saka, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his uh, son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about six, the sixth hour, which is about 12 o'clock in the day. That's the sixth hour. Uh, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. Uh, for his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, unto Jesus, how is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealing with the Samarians. Jesus answered her and said, and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him, asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Hallelujah. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Are thou greater than our father uh, Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither cometh here to draw. Now, at this point in time, she was still thinking on the natural level and not have perceived yet the spiritual level. 
uh, she was trying to figure out a way where she didn't have to come back to the water hole uh, uh, to be ridiculed and, and to be talked about. Uh, you know, because this woman, she had like five husbands and blah, blah, blah. That's why she was going in the middle of the day when it was burning hot. She knew nobody else, well, you know, everybody else was home because it was burning hot. She was trying to figure out a way where she could stay in the house and do her own thing. You know, she ain't had to come draw no water. You know, just like some of us on today, always trying to figure out a way how to, how to get more out of Jesus, but put less in. Oh, uh, yeah, we do it. We try to figure out how to get more out of Jesus, but put less in. We go on with verse 16. It says, Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and cometh here. And come here. He told her to go get a husband, <laughs> and then come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now has is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in the, you have to see how she went from being a prophet, talking about no husband, and talking about getting some water, give me this water. Now she's talking about our father worship in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus ain't said nothing about that. It's to be noted now, she perceived that Jesus is a prophet. Now she want to get all spiritual on him and go to talking about some worshiping. Now beforehand, she wasn't talking nothing about no, wasn't talking nothing spiritual. All of a sudden, she, she perceived that he's a prophet. Verse 21 said, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. <laughs> we know what we worship, for salvation is unto the Jews. Uh, Jesus was basically told her, told this woman that, and you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you all shaked up and talking about some worshiping God. He was like, you don't know what you're talking about. Jesus said, let me tell you about something. Worshiping God, uh, uh, that's for the Jews. He, he was like, and, and even what I'm talking about, the Jews are confused about. <laughs> but verse 23 goes on to say, but the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Jesus was saying uh, uh, right here, time out for all that lip service. That's what he was talking about. It's time out for all that lip service that the Jews had been doing you know, and, and some of the Samaritans and that was calling themselves worshiping him. He says, time out for all of that lip service. It's time for some real action. Time for some real servitude. Time for some real change in your heart, in your mind, and in your soul. He says, time for the true worship. Yeah. Well, verse 25 goes on to say, the woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh. Messiah's cometh. Jesus is called Christ, which is uh, called Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. Yes, he will. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Yes, Lord. And upon this came his disciples, marveling that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, why speakest thou, or why talkest thou with her? 
The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, now, now, right here, uh, 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 this is what Jesus will cause you to do, is leave your water pot. <laughs> when you have an encounter with Jesus, he will cause you to change the trajectory yeah. of your life. Yeah. You will begin to prioritize the spiritual things over the natural things. Yeah. She just forgot about, about where she came out there to get some water. She left that water pot at the well. Forgot all about it. All this thing was on her mind was Jesus. Yeah. That's the way we ought to get. Jesus on the main line. Yeah. Jesus on our mind. As the, the old, older people used to say, when, when you see me coming, I got Jesus on my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Verse 29 goes on to say, come see a man. That's what she was telling them which told me all things that ever I did. <laughs> is, is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore, said the disciples one to another, have any man brought him out, out to eat? Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, uh, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Before I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. Mm. And he that reapeth receive wages and gather fruit unto life eternal that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together oh that's some good stuff there and wherein and herein is that saying true one soweth and another reapeth I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor other men labored and ye are entered into their labors. Now right here, you know uh, what the sad thing is about this? Is that some of us is not a sower, and some of us is not a reaper, and some of us is not even a laborer. Mm, that's what I say. Some of us is just standing on the shoreline scared to stick our feet into the water. Don't even talk about jumping into the deep. My God, not even talk about it. We just standing on the shoreline. We, we, we're not doing anything. My God, let us read on. Verse 39 says, And many of the Samaritans of the city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified he told me all things that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were coming to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them and he abide there two days. And many more believed because of his own word and said unto the woman, now we believe, not because of thou saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Hallelujah. The truth about God is God will share living water with anyone who comes to the well. Yes. Water from the well. It is to be noted on tonight that we are speaking today from Words of Life Ministry of the Apostolic Faith, which is the place to be known to be the place where the fountain of life flows. Yes. For every person that desires a drink of the living water, a water that if you drink, thou shalt thirst no more. And that flows from the water, that water flows from Jesus. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. 
It flows here for the people of this community here at Martinez, in Martinez, Georgia. For the state of Georgia, for the United States, and for the whole world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the scripture goes on to say in verse 5, it says, Then cometh he to a city of Samaritan, which is called uh, 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 Sychar, which again I say mean a liar or a drunk or the end. It says near to the parcel of ground that Jacob uh, gave to his son Joseph. Uh, look where Jesus decided to park his car. In the city of the liar. In the neighborhood of the drunkard. At the driveway or in the driveway of the house at the end. Now this end that we're talking about uh, uh, when we have, uh, uh, this is the end, uh, when we have hit rock bottom, and there's no place to go but up. You're, th this, this place, uh, 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 Sychar, that was in Samaria, it's a place in life where you get so low, if somebody was to cut you on your arm, the blood would, it would bleed upward. Jesus. You're so low. That's low, ain't it? Anybody ever been that low? <laughs> That's low. Ain't nothing, ain't, ain't, ain't look, there ain't no more down you can get. Everything is upward from there. Ah, somebody say, but Jesus came by. Ah, uh, yeah. Now tell me, has anybody again ever been that low? Anybody ever had any? horrific or horrible things that, that was going on in your life that brought you to such a low place. <clears throat> this is the time where you have uh, tried everything uh, that you ever could try to get out of this life situation, to get out of this storm, to get out of this issue to get out of this horrible relationship that you have become entrapped in. Time to, this is the time that you want to break free from the chains that was holding you down. I have tried to get out of this uh, 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 humongous problem, but I just can't. I've tried to get out uh, from under this mountain of debt, uh, that I'm uh, uh, drowning in, this weight uh, that I'm carrying, that's sitting on my shoulders. Uh, it has me uh, where I can't even stand up straight. I can't even walk upright. I have to walk bent over because it's weighing me down. My God. This is the time where you have already uh, 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 tried Jesus but he didn't answer you because when you called on him you called on him half heartedly oh, you, 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 you just were not you weren't at rock bottom yet you weren't at, 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 at Sychar yet your heart wasn't quite right yet to make that transition uh, uh, from uh counting on uh, you because you was counting on yourself and other peoples to do what you should have been counting on Jesus to do. Amen. You totally wasn't counting on Jesus yet. You know, you just throw the whisper out there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Verse 6 goes on to say, now Jacob well was there. Jesus therefore being worried, uh, uh, wearied with his journey Set thus on the well, and it was about six hour, the sixth hour. So Jesus uh, decided to park his car down at the hangout spot, over at the water hole, the well, Jacob's well. Listen, Jesus went to a spot where everybody in the city had to come at some point in time, because everybody 
going to need some water at some point in time. Yeah. Hallelujah. What better spot than this could have been chosen to witness that? Everybody got to come by there. It, no matter whether you sick or you well, no matter whether you poor or you rich, no matter what it is, what's your condition, what's your position, what's your type, whether you black, white, Puerto Rican, or, or, or a Samaritan, or a Jew, or whatever it is, you're going to need some water. Amen. You're going to need some water. And Jesus positioning himself just right. Verse 7 says, There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples had gone away unto the city about meat, to buy some meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask me, uh, ask of me to drink, drink of me, uh, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. I can just imagine the Samaritan woman when she was saying this. She probably like this. Jesus probably standing over there, you know, Jesus, she was on one side, say this is the well. Jesus was over here, she probably over here, and he's standing up, he's like, give me something to drink. And she probably like, you talking to me? Me? Uh, uh, are you talking to me? You, you know how you know how that, that, that they do on that. I forgot the name of that movie, but they, they say you talking to me. <laughs> I bet she was like you talking to me. To me, she said, you know, I know you're not talking to me. I'm a Samaritan, and plus on top of that, I'm a woman. Hallelujah. And I he's like, oh, you ain't talking to me. Like, you gotta be kidding. So verse 10 goes on to say, Jesus answered her and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that said unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him, or asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Yeah. You notice that Jesus didn't even entertain her about uh, being a Samaritan. And the issue and the problem between the Samaritans and the Jews. And he didn't even entertain her about being a woman. You know, we should take note of this and learn from this when it comes to teaching and preaching the word of God. Uh, some things we shouldn't even entertain. That's right. uh, don't let the things of this world distract you uh, from accomplishing your task at hand, which is Jesus and delivering his word. And witnessing for him. Because, see, he, he was like, he, he ain't even entertained. He ain't say nothing about it. You see, bring it up like, you know, me and you don't talk. We ain't got nothing in common, you know. That's kind of like me, you know, going with a three-piece suit down uh, uh, at uh, a Salvation Army or something. And uh, or on the, somebody on the street and saying, you know, hey, man, you will start to have a conversation with him. They be like, what? what? You talking to me? You talking for real? You talking to me? What you, what you want? See, that's what I'm saying. But Jesus, he, he went right on by that. He kept going right on by that. Jesus was, uh, uh, Jesus was using the tactic or the example that he has given us here at Words of Life Ministry, which is Jeremiah 31 and 3. The Lord has appeared unto old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Despite her, her disposition, her life's disposition, Jesus was showing her love and kindness. Despite her being a Samaritan, despite her, her uh, uh, having five husbands, despite her uh, 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 shacking up with the man that she was with right now, despite her living in a neighborhood of drunkards, uh, in the end of, in, in the end, or uh, living with liars, uh, despite her being a woman, uh, uh, Jesus demonstrated love and kindness unto her. Despite all of that, hallelujah, he, he, he demonstrated love and kindness. Jesus said, if thou knewest the gift of God, 
Now, the one uh, uh, would have to ask the question, what is the gift of God that Jesus is speaking about? Romans 5, 15 through 17, I'm reading from the uh, Message Bible. It says, yeah, the, the rescuing gift is not exactly parallel to the death dealing sign or sin. If one man's sin put crowds of people at the death end, abyss separation, separating from God, just think what God's gift poured through one man, Jesus Christ, would do. There is no comparison between the death dealing sin and his and this generation life giving uh, life giving gift. The verdict on that one, sin was the death sentence. The verdict on the many sins that followed was the wonderful life sentence. If death got the upper hand through one man's wrongdoing, can you imagine uh, the breathtaking recovery life makes? Absolute life in those who grasp with both hands his, his wildly extravagant life gift. This grand settings everything right. It, it, in other words, it sets everything right. That the one man Jesus provided, that gift that Jesus provided sets everything right. Ephesians 2, 8 and 10 says, Now God has us where he wants us. With all the time in this world. And the next to shower uh, and to shower grace and kindness upon us in Jesus Christ. Saving is all his ideal and all his work. All we do is trust him enough to let him do it. It's God's gift uh, from start to finish. We don't play the major role. If we did, we would probably uh, go around bragging about it, that we've done the whole thing. No. We neither nor uh, have saved ourselves. We neither made ourselves or saved ourselves. God does both the making and the saving. He created each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does. The good work he has gotten ready for us to do. Work we had better be doing. Hallelujah. Uh, so... To uh, sum this up, the gift of God is salvation. And salvation is eternal life. Thank you, Lord. That's what it's all saying. The gift of God is salvation, and salvation is eternal life. Verses 10 goes on to say, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it, who it is, that said is to thee, give me to drink. Well, hallelujah, what do Jesus mean when he says, who it is that said to thee, give me to drink? Well, I think that question needs to be answered. Who is it that is asking her, give me to drink? Who is Jesus? What a question to be answered. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Well, uh, first lady going to help me out a little bit this, uh, this afternoon. Who is Jesus? He is El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty. Yes. El Elyon, the Most High God. El Donah, Lord Master, Yahweh, Lord Jehovah. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner. Jehovah Ra, the Lord, my shepherd. Thank you. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Jehovah Sikinu, the Lord our righteousness. Jehovah Mesikim, the Lord who sanctifies you. El Olam, the everlasting God. Elohim, he is God. Kwana, he's a jealous God. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. And Jehovah Sabah, the Lord of hosts. And he is the Alpha and the Omega. 
He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon. He is the forgiver of our sins. He is the maker of this world, and without him, there is nothing made. He is the Messiah, the Savior of this world and of every world. He is the great Redeemer. He is the light of the world, and he is the light of men. He is the truth and the life. He is the Son of God. He is the manifestation of the Word of God in the flesh. He is the great I am. Hallelujah. He is Elohim. He is God. And if I could talk forever, I could never say enough about how great he is. He is God, the great I am. This is who Jesus was trying to tell her that she's talking to. Oh, yeah. You know who you're talking to? Oh, man. This is the one that is asking her for a drink. Uh, uh, just think if she really knew who she was talking to. Do you really know who, who it is? Do you really know who Jesus is? Who Jesus is trying to, do you know who, who's trying to talk to you on this night? The one that's standing at your door knocking, wanting to come in, but, but you hear him, and here you are refusing to let the king of kings in. The Lord of lords, the master, the ruler, the great I am into your life. It's obvious, hallelujah, that you're, uh, you haven't been to Sakar yet. You haven't been to Sakar yet. It's obvious that you don't know who it is that's knocking at your door who is knocking on the door of your heart, the door of your mind right now. Hallelujah. It's Jesus. Oh, man, you ain't hit rock bottom yet. Uh, you ain't been to Sychar yet. Verse 10 goes on to say, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it was that said unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. The verse said that thou would have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. Now, this strikes up another question. What is this living water uh, that I'm going to get that I shall never thirst again? If I ask of Jesus to drink, if I ask of Jesus the gift of the living water, my God, uh, uh, um, thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Isaiah 12. Isaiah 12, and this is, again, the message Bible, and uh, hallelujah. It says, and you will say in that day, I thank you, God. You were angry, but your anger wasn't forever. You withdrew your anger and moved in and comf uh, comfort me. Yes, indeed, God is my salvation. I trust. I, would, I wouldn't be afraid. God, yes, God, is my strength and my song. Best of all, my salvation. Joyfully, you will pull up uh, You'll, you'll pull up buckets of water. <laughs> yes. It says joyfully, you will pull up buckets of water from the well of salvation. The well of salvation. And as you do it, you will say, give thanks to God. Uh, call out his name. What is his name? Jesus. Jesus. Ask him anything. Shout to the nations. Tell them what he's done. Spread the news of his great reputation. See, that's what that's what the uh, Samaritan woman was doing. He, he, he wished and touched her with that salvation. She went running, telling everybody about Jesus. Uh, five and six says, sing praises and songs to God. He's done it all. 
Let the whole earth know uh, uh, what he's done. That's right. See, let him know. It says, raise the roof. Now, how, how many of y'all used to be back in the club when they used to sing that song? When there when wasn't a song, I don't guess. But they used to be hollering, raise the roof. But they, they'll put some more stuff in it. We ain't going to say all that. But here in the word of God, see, they thought they had come up with something. It already here in the word of God. It said, raise the roof. Sing your hearts out, O Zion. The greatest, uh, the greatest lives among you. The Holy One of Israel. The greatest lives among you. But now, us that has the Holy Ghost can say, the greatest live in us. Yes, yes. Now, we should be able to raise the roof. Yes. Oh, my God. Isaiah 43, 44 and 3 says, Thus says the, uh, the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, uh, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, uh, uh, Jesserin, uh, whom I have uh, uh, chosen. <coughs> For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. And flood upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed. And my blessing upon thine offspring. You can see the living water is the spirit of God. Let us go a little deeper into the scriptures to see this. John uh, uh, 7 and 37 it says. In the last day, that great day of the feast. Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Uh, but, verse 9 is, uh, 39 says, But this spake he of the Spirit which they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Revelation 7 and 16 says, They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Uh, this is why uh, Jesus told that Samaritan woman that, that he could give her water that she'll never thirst anymore. Amen. Because of this, he said that they will hunger no more, and neither will they thirst anymore. Hallelujah. Verse 17 says, For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto the, the, li the living fountains of water. Ah, uh, yeah. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Uh, don't you find it strange that the lamb shall be feeding us? Normally we feed lambs, right? <laughs> we normally we feed lambs. And, and don't you find it strange that the lamb is going to be leading us uh, to the living fountain of waters? When normally we're the one that be leading lambs and sheep and, and goats to, uh, to the water hole. But look how God then changed things around. Uh, but of course, we know that lamb is the lamb of God, which is Jesus. And we, you know, we can follow him anywhere. Hallelujah. He'll make it all right. So we have uh, uh, surmised and come to this conclusion by all the evidence of these scriptures that we just covered, which uh, there are many more that we didn't cover that we can come to the conclusion that the living water that Jesus spoke about is the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of God. Uh, the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From thence, from thence then hast thou that living water. How you going to have some water? You ain't got nothing to draw with, which she was telling him. I must tell the Samaritan woman this. I beg your pardon, ma'am. 
uh, Jesus do have something to draw with. And that something is love and kindness. He says, by love and kindness have I drawn thee. Because that's what he was drawing her with. Because he showed her love and kindness. Hallelujah. You see, it's, it's by the goodness of God and his mercy and grace and his love and kindness that, that he have drawn you. Uh, but, but what he needs is a clean bucket or pail uh, to put that living water in. The bucket is your heart, your soul. Hallelujah. Uh, but on the way, see, before he put it in there, it need to be cleaned out. Uh, and that bucket, which is your heart, is clean out, your heart and your soul, hallelujah, is clean out through repentance, forgiveness, and the remission of your sins. And Jesus will be able to pour in that living water. Hallelujah. Acts 2 and 38 said, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit, as some says, is the living water of God, which is Jesus, which is God. Okay, verse 14 and 15 goes on to say, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. Where is this water springing up to this everlasting life that Jesus is talking about? Jesus is talking about the water or the living water, which is the spirit of God, which is the thing that's going to change your death row sentence from your, from your death row sentences for your sins into forgiveness of sins, remission of sins, and eternal life with Jesus in heaven. Yes, yes. You see, that, that, that water, that, that, that living water, is the thing that's going to change your life. Thank you, God. Romans 8 and 11 says, But if the spirit of him that, that, that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit. That shall dwell in you. In other words, that living water, which is the spirit of God. This is why he was trying to give it to her. At some point in time, we're going to be changed. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 50 says, uh, uh, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does do corruption inherit incorruption. He says, Behold, I shall I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. See, we're gonna to have to be changed in order to go in heaven. Flesh and blood is not gonna enter into heaven. And we're gonna need that living water to make that transition. That living water. That's why we shall thirst no more. Because when we get to heaven, we ain't going to need no water. Amen. Not no water, that, not no H2O. We're going to need that HG, that Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. It says that in verse 52, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52, it says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. We shall be changed. For the corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. And now let us pick back up in the, uh, in the hallelujah, in John. Uh, uh, four and five 
Let's pick back up John 4 and 39. 4 and 39. Hallelujah. Skip down to 39. Now, I think that this uh, verse here is one of the most important verses in this set of scriptures. Verse 39. It says, and, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. For the saying of the woman was testified. He told me all things ever I did. Now this old woman, that Samaritan woman, that was, uh, 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 that was a strike number one right there against her. She was a Samaritan because the Jews considered the Samaritan to be dogs. And they treated them as such. This is why the woman asked Jesus, which was a Jew, why are you talking to me? And this is why the disciples had this bad attitude when they came back from buying that meat. They were looking at Jesus all sideways and stuff because he was talking to this Samaritan woman. You know, he ain't supposed to be talking to no Samaritan woman. Hallelujah. You see, the Jews disliked the Samaritan people so much until they wouldn't even cross their land. Normally, the Jews, uh, uh, if, they, if they were trying to get to the other side of Samaria, Samaria, they would walk all the way around. They wouldn't even cross over their land. That's some, that's some dislike, ain't it? That's some hatred there. Isn't it funny? Uh, I guess not ha-ha funny. But it's funny how we put so much energy and, and interest and effort into doing what is wrong. But when it comes to doing what's right, uh, we become all slowful, disinterested, too tired to move forth into doing what is right. It's too much of a hassle uh, to, do, to go forth and to do what's right. Doing what's right oftentimes costs you a little something. Uh, one day I'll tell you about our storage in the back about getting some electricity back there in our storage that we put up back there in the back. Oh, you're talking about doing what's right, cost you something. Oh, God, I ain't, I ain't got time today. But, uh, whew. As I said, though, doing what's right might cost us a little something. But let me tell you, doing what's wrong is going to cost you everything one day. That's right. Hallelujah. It might not be a day where you walking on this earth, but one day doing what's wrong is going to cost you everything. Now, strike number two against her is that she was a woman in that Middle Eastern cultural back then with Jesus. So automatically, it meant that she wasn't really respected. So again, why, why are you talking to me, Jesus? Hallelujah. Strike number three against her is she was a woman that seemed to have gotten around quite a bit. Uh, or either she had some bad luck, as the world would put it, uh, with relationships. Because uh, she had five husbands, and the one that she with wasn't even her husband. Hallelujah. Now, strike number four against her is that she was, uh, 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 that she, oh yeah, strike number four against her right then was that she was shacking up with somebody that wasn't even her husband while Jesus was talking to her at the well. So this Samaritan woman, with all those strikes against her, was able to testify of the goodness of Jesus yes. and get people to follow her to Jesus. Now, what's our excuse? Tell me, are you testifying about the goodness of Jesus? Are you saying, and, and, and are, are, are you saying, look what Jesus has done for me? Or are you saying, look what Jesus can do for you? Or are you telling anybody at all about Jesus? Tell me, is anybody following you to Jesus? Is anybody following you to church? 
Verse 41 and 42, it, it goes on to say, And many more believed because of his word. And said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. As we come to an end here, listen, some of you may, may be here, may be listening online, or you may be listening online, because of the faith of somebody like that Samaritan woman. The faith of the person that witnessed to you. But I'm telling you today, in other words, you hear because of their faith. I'm telling you today, uh, uh, like verse 42 says, for we have heard him for ourselves uh, being Jesus. Talking about him being Jesus. It's time for you to hear Jesus for yourself. It's time for you to get your own experience with Jesus. You know, and stop riding the coattail of somebody that witnessed to you. Or the coattail of your mama or your daddy or the pastor or, or evangelist, or sister or brother. It's time for you to hear Jesus for yourself. It's time for you to experience Jesus for yourself. And let Jesus change that trajectory in your life. Change the direction uh, from where you're going to death. Change your trajectory to life. Uh, it's, it, it, it's so, it, it's noted. Again, I speak. Again, I say. It's noted that we're speaking today from Words of Life Ministry of the Apostolic Faith, which is the place to be known for the fountain of life flowing for every person that desires a drink of living water on today. Water that if you drink, you shall thirst no more. And this water is flowing from Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. Now, what I need for you to do is to come on down to Words of Life Ministry of the Apostolic Faith, 3815B, Martinez Boulevard in Martinez, Georgia. And what I need for you to do is come and allow Jesus to, you know, you're that pail or that bucket is your heart your soul, your body. Let Jesus clean you up by repenting of your sins. Hallelujah. By the remission of your sins, by asking forgiveness. And Jesus will fill you up with the living water, which is the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Ghost. Anybody volunteer today? Right here in the assembly. Anybody volunteering today that Jesus will fill you up with that living water? Call us at 706-257-3022. Hallelujah. And we'll meet you here at the building. And Jesus will fill you if you ask. He will give you the gift of that Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This concludes our Bible study. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. For his word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for his word.